Hey folks, JD here, and today we're going to be taking up this. This is the Ghoul RC T700, and it's a mini indoor-outdoor camera quadcopter. Looks really quite nice, very, very small, of the same sort of form factor as the DJI Ryze Tello. All in all, I think this is going to be okay. Now, I was hoping today to go for an outdoor flight. Unfortunately, as I'm sure you're going to hear in this flight, the winds are howling. Between 40 and 50 mile an hour for the minute, so this is totally out of the question to fly outside. Another thing to note, when you plug the battery inside here, all these cables, they do fit in, but it's a right kerfuffle to get everything in there. So please be careful when you do get everything in, just to ensure that you don't snip these little cables with the door when you come to close it. Right, so we've done that for the second, so now we're going to turn the quadcopter on. But in order for us to actually turn it on and calibrate it properly, let's get on the mat. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to turn on the quadcopter just by using the little button underneath and then once the quadcopter is on turn on the transmitter single one up and one down to bind now because we want to control this with the transmitter first it's important same as any quadcopter to automatically bind with the transmitter first before you then link it to the wi-fi uh before you then link it to your tablet otherwise what you're going to have is you're going to have your your default setting for control is going to be your tablet and not your transmitter. So are we connected there? No, we're not. Okay, let's do a bit of fiddling with this so that we can get it to, to work. For this, what I'm going to do, pretty standard. Let's just close all the apps that we have there. Let's reopen A to Z screen recorder because I want to get a bit of footage from this as well. Then what we'll do is we'll check to see that she's actually connected to the Wi-Fi. So open up settings. No, she's connected to the house Wi-Fi, so click, there we go, connect to Wi-Fi 720p UFO. And then from there, we can slide across and we can click on the XS FPV app. Now, hopefully from here, there is one thing I want to say, actually. When you automatically load this up for the first time, it's going to be on Japanese or Chinese. So you've got to click this second button here in order to switch to English. Unless, of course, your particular language is not English, in which case you may want to keep on clicking until you get to the language of your choice. Now, when you're ready, this countdown is just my screen recorder, click play, and then it opens up. And now we've got, yeah, we've got some video there. So what you're going to do is calibrate the gyros down to the bottom left, down to the bottom right. Once you hear the beep, calibration's complete. To take off, and up she goes. All right. There's a nice sound to this. Straight away I can notice it. Normally with these smaller quads you get a very high-pitched whine. Not with this, it's more of a, well, more of a dull drone, droning sound. Okay, this is speed mode one, I'm guessing. Let's shift it into speed mode two. Ooh, that's angle of attack alters. Nose focuses down a little bit more. That is quite quick. I wonder if this has got three speeds. Yes, it does. Okay, and the three speeds. Wow, this is, okay, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is quite dicey. Certainly not an indoor flyer in speed mode three. Certainly not in the living room as small as mine. Uh, okay, that's a little bit strange. Very, very fast. If I let this go in the field, this is really going to zim away from us really quickly. Really, really quickly. Okay, back to speed mode one. And let's see, whoa. There we go, that was my fault there entirely. I was too focused on looking at these LEDs. They're very, very bright and actually then where the flight path of the quad actually was going, so that's my fault. But as I was saying about these LEDs, green at the front, orange at the back, very, very, very bright. I like that. I think you're gonna be able to see this at distance as well without there being much issue. Okay, let's try some of these 3D flips. So let's bring her down. So we should have four directional flipping. So in order to initialize, it's the right analog stick, it's the right uh, shoulder button, and then a direction on the analog stick. So that was forward and then backwards. So as you can see, I'm flipping her from quite a low angle because she does rise in altitude quite a lot in order for the to complete these flips. There we go. And because of the light fitting here, I don't want it to hit it. So that's four directional flipping, front, back, left and right. It seemed to be a lot better with the back flipping than it did for the front, but that's a standard quadcopter thing anyway. It's probably just to do with the, the direction of the, of the wind on the particular propellers anyway, which is why it's easier for it to flip backwards and it doesn't wallow as much as it does when it goes forwards. But all in all, that's a nice flyer. That is solid. 
that really is a solid little flyer and I mean very small movements is all you need in order to control this really small movements in order to control this it is it's nice I really can't wait to take this out as I was saying I, sh I should have taken it out today but this wind is just well it would absolutely annihilate this and I'd lose it and I, I don't want that cornering in this is nice as well I can't fulfill a proper yaw and roll because I don't have the space but see she's quite tight on them if I bring her back around and then add a little bit of roll see she is she's quite tight there's not any wallow there at all I like that as for stability I think maybe a bit of trimming is needed but um, let's give her a little bit of trimming I have had the heating on in here for full disclosure so that barometer is going to be reading set a lot of different pressures as I'm sure you can you can tell okay so that is LVC so what I'm going to do is just click the one key land button and then controller with the right analog stick but never fear we've got another battery now I know this is where the, this is where people normally say give it 10 minutes let the motors rest and then take them back up and normally I would full heartedly agree with that but on this instance I'm not gonna I'm gonna totally ignore that rule and I'm going to just go for it so what I'm gonna do is remove that one battery battery is quite warm not bubbled in any way that's quite nice there we go and I'm gonna put in the other battery the new one let's plug that in what I'm also gonna do as well is I'm gonna stop that so that was four minutes and 27 seconds of first battery which is remarkably Le a lot less than what it is rated but at the end of the day let's get a few more charges in that battery and let's see how this second one does and I'll do a I'll revisit this battery outside as for the motors the motors are quite nice and cool they're not really that warm at all which is surprises me for be being in a total indoor environment but um, yeah that's that's quite nice now this is what I mean about the cables they really do take quite a bit of filling in order to get in and then once you're in the back does snap in quite nicely so let's turn off the transmitter let's turn on the quadcopter let's turn on the transmitter again single one up and one down to bind just calibrate those gyros now in a case of full disclosure it took me a while to get everything sorted on the tablet and everything so I've been down for about four minutes which is not advice you should be down for longer than that ten minutes so that you can actually get uh, so you can leave these motors cool down a bit but I'm not too concerned at this particular time they are very cold to the touch um, this is a new copter I normally adhere to the 10 minute rule but I'm not going to in this case it's not your normal high pitched high pitched whine um, so yes so what I'm going to do is just fly around a little bit more and see whether we can increase on that four and a half minute battery time with this second battery those LEDs really are so so very bright Oh, I can't wait to take this out. I think this is going to be fantastic out outdoors. I really do. As for stability indoors, ooh, as I said, I've had the heating on, so the barometer is going to be reading separate pressures. But let's see if I can trim this up a little bit. She's not actually moving side to side, other than the barometer reading different pressures. Now, as for the FPV. I have been looking down every now and again at the tablet just to see how that has been operating. I haven't noticed any glitches, but then to be to be totally honest, uh, I am extremely close, so I wouldn't expect there to be any signal issues because I'm literally less than three foot away at most times. So yeah, I wouldn't expect there to be any issue. It seems to be pretty pretty good as well. It doesn't seem to be any lag. Um, from what I can see when I turn I'm actually getting that real time back out of the app as well yeah I like this this is nice I can't wait to take this out I really can't wait to take this out okay so let's try a couple of other things let's hover over the chair for a second uh, because I want to try the emergency stop so if I click and hold oh sorry click once emergency stop kicks in but one thing you will notice the LEDs are still on they're still bright so that means I should be able to then click one key takeoff and that's it, you're straight back up in the air. No problem whatsoever there. That's nice, there's no rebinding needed, there's no recalibration of the gyros needed, unless of course you land on its head or something like that and you know in which case I would say calibrate before you take back off again. But all in all, looks pretty sweet, it does look pretty sweet. I'm really quite excited about this or so taking it outside, a lot more than I usually am with a quadcopter of this calibre. 
but um, yeah this this is good and I like those rubber feet as well they do stand out quite a lot and in fact the whole color scheme is nice as I mentioned in the unboxing but something a bit different about this is that it's it looks like it's made to last maybe I'm wrong but the with the the those rubber feet standing out as much as they are it's its stability indoors is fantastic apart from the feathering with the, the barometer but as I say I have had my heating on so there's probably pressure differentials that that barometer is reading the overall sound of the quadcopter the motors as well are very nice they're not whiny they're very quiet sort of more of a down uh, sort of more of a, uh, a, a of a of a lower register on the sound I, I, I like that I like that a lot Nice. Fair play, Gulasi. You've done uh, you've done a nice quad here, especially for indoor flight. Although it is a bit tricky <laughs> in indoors. I can't wait to see what she's like outdoors. I hope she's going to be good. I really do. I'm guessing she's going to be good just based on her flight pattern in here today. But uh, yeah, I think I'm taken with this. You know what? Let's wait and go wait and give you the full verdict as to when uh, when I fly it outdoors. But uh, oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. that's me let's click the emergency stop button there see I do not have enough room in this place to fly these but I didn't want to leave you in a week without having a an unboxing and a, and a flight test even if it is an indoor um, but yeah this is this is nice it feels nice it feels it feels it it feels tight its movements feel tight you know just from rocking side to side very small movements give you the movements that you want out of the quadcopter. With some of these toy grade miniature micro quads, you have to literally bank her side to side and fulfill the movement, uh, the full movement of that th of the of the of the analog stick. With this, you don't. It's very very small, and you get yourself a nice bit of movement out of it. You know, it's it's nice. I like it. I wish uh, I hadn't had the heating on though. That's my my one big thing. Uh, is that so that we could actually see how stable this was it's not really a good test from that point of view but still we'll be taking her outside soon uh, in the next uh, week or so so we can see exactly what she's like there but yeah you know what I really like this I think this is going to be good I think this is going to be very good and even mostly using your to turn around until the last maybe 90 degrees in which case I'm bringing in I'm bringing in roll as well and uh, she's just brilliant just really really tight with it really tight with it a couple of indoor funnels <laughs> or half a funnel but yeah i'm really taken with that i think that's good right do you know what i'm gonna probably stop that there i think i don't want this video to run on too long for you uh, but already what are we looking at six minutes of recording on this particular battery so probably i need to exercise that first battery a little bit more there just so that we get more of a time out of that more uh, more flight time out of it so four and a half minutes on the first battery six and a half minutes six what are we 634 630 640 on the second battery so i'm going to i'm going to say that's pretty good to be honest i think that's actually pretty good um I'm going to exercise that first battery a bit. We'll come back and we'll revisit that battery maybe in about a week or so once I've had a couple more charges and discharges in it. But, um, yeah, it looks to be okay. Oh, have I cracked that arm? I have. I've cracked that arm, look. Must have been from one of the crashes on the side. Ooh, I'm going to need to repair that. That's not great. Okay, as for these motors, uh, motors are, uh, this attempt, they're lukewarm, but they're not hot. And there's no smell of cordite, there's no smell of burning, electronics, as for the battery, I'm guessing this battery is going to be warm, same as, the, same as the last one, yeah, battery's warm, but this is it, you're flying indoors, there's no environmental factors, that, you know, pushing itself over the quad to cool it down, these motors, same as all quad motors, they are air cooled, the thing I like about this though is that you can remove this bottom and you can remove the, uh, the, the motors, so it has given you a little bit of, um, a little bit of, of maintenance, which is possible on this, but I'm not liking that. Look at that, I'm gonna to have to seal that with some plastic cement, I think. And then test the weight on each side to see whether it's level, and if, if not, put a little drop of plastic cement on the other side to even it out. But yeah, that must have been from one of the crashes. 
Ooh, not good. But you know what? That's what you get for flying indoors with a quadcopter that's not really an indoor quad. But there we are, my friends. I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to repair this. We're going to take her back out then for a flight and see exactly how she does on the outside as soon as this wind and these storms totally clear themselves away. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening, my friends. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends. Happy flying.